Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Welcome to the ever increasing world feast. I'm excited to welcome you, friends and family, right here on Facebook, YouTube, and all our social media handles. Abel Damina is my name. Listen, the truth of the word of God is, when God's word is preached and taught, God's power to save is made available. Brother Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. I'm honored to serve you grace today, to bring you clarity of teaching from the word of God. Invite a friend, a loved one, create watch parties, tag people, because the word is gonna come very hot and powerful today. You know, there's a mandate of God on my life to reintroduce Jesus to this generation, equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. It is with that mandate in mind that this message is coming to you right now. It will change your life forever. However, remember the scripture tells us the time shall come when they shall not endure sound doctrine. The Greek word hugaino wholesome doctrine. There's an endurance required. So as you listen, please painstakingly and patiently listen to the teaching of God's word. Don't listen with a critical mind. Listen with a mind to learn. You know, Jesus said, learn of me for I am meek and lowly of heart and you shall find rest. So there's a meekness required. Brother James says, with meekness, receive the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. There's a meekness required. And there's endurance required where sound doctrine is concerned. So you want to patiently follow the teachings. Most of my teachings are in a series. So get ready to follow. And if there's anything you don't understand, be patient. The teachings will continue to explain themselves until you come to a place of understanding and clarity in the knowledge of Christ. One more thing to say with you today. If you're in an area where there's no Bible teaching church, where the message of Christ like this is preached, you can start one or you can join any of our campuses. Our campuses are extension houses of our local church where brethren come together and they are fed, they are taught, they take responsibility, they pray together, they reach out to the people in their community with the truth of God's word. Our campuses are lighthouses in nations and cities and communities where believers come together and they are taught the word of God by myself. And I'm excited if you want to be a part of what we're doing around your community or you want to start one. All you need to do is shoot me a mail today, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. And we shall guide you on what to do to either begin one campus or join another. It's not good for you to be in isolation. The Bible says, do not dismiss the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. In prophecy, the word of God tells us that God will bring the solitary into families. You are a member of a family and there is no family that does not have a gathering. Our gathering is our assemblage to be taught, to be equipped, and to become responsible for other people's growth. It's so important, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you today. Lastly, there's a plethora of books I have written that addresses so many issues of the Christian faith. They're all on the screen. Look at this. Today, you can order for a book or two or all the set by shooting an email to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Including today's message, you can order for the CD or the DVD. The entire essence is to nourish you, enrich you, and equip you with robust understanding of your relationship with Almighty God. I'm excited to be able to serve you. Fasting your seatbelts. Let me take you right now into a gospel adventure, into the service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy viewing. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us. Make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us. And the venue is in every place. Make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us. The word triumph in Christ is an old word. It means the trophy of victory or the proof of victory. We are the proof of Jesus' victory. We are the trophy of Jesus' victory. That the victory that Jesus obtained, we are the proof of that victory. And because we are the proof of that victory, all that Christ did, he did it in us. 
So since all that he did, he did it in us, it is now our responsibility to take what he has done in us and turn it into ministry to others. We take what he has done in us and turn it into ministry to others. The finished work of Christ in us becomes now our ministry to others. Knowing who we are in Christ and what we have in Christ in turn becomes our ministry to share with other people. Making manifest the savor of his grace. In Romans chapter 1 verse 16, brother Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. So the gospel is the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel does not have power. The gospel is the power. It is the power. So the preaching of the gospel is the preaching of power unto salvation. That means the power of God can only be seen within the confines of salvation. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Outside of salvation, you can't see the power of God. The power of God only works within the framework of salvation. And the gospel is a conveyor of God's power. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. God's desire is to have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. In Romans chapter 10, brother Paul says, My heart desire for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. So they forsake the righteousness of God and they go about establishing their own righteousness. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed. So the preaching of the gospel is the revelation of God's righteousness. The righteousness of God, not the righteousness of man. So the gospel is predicated on what Christ has done. The gospel, the preaching of the gospel is predicated on what Christ has done. It's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Therein in the gospel is the righteousness of God revealed. So the preaching of the gospel is the revelation of God's righteousness. The revelation of God's righteousness. The revelation of God's righteousness. The more of the word you know, the more of the word you know, the more stable and effective you will be in sharing the gospel. The more of the word of God you appreciate, the more of the word of God you appreciate, the more effective you will be in sharing the gospel. Let me take you through brother Peter. Let's travel together through brother Peter. Write this down in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 11. You will see that there was a difference in Peter's sermon. The more you grow in the knowledge of the word of God, the more effective you are preaching. The more you grow in the knowledge of the word of God, the more precise, the more accurate, the more clearer your message the more you grow in the knowledge of God's word. It got better for Peter. As he grew, he became more accurate in his preaching. Because the more you hear the gospel, the more you share the gospel, the more precise you become. The more you hear the gospel, the more you share the gospel, the more precise you become. The more you hear the gospel, the more you share the gospel, the more precise you become. Some of us, when we got saved, you can spend six weeks trying to preach to one person. But as you grew in knowledge, as you grew in knowledge, you became more effective. So that you can share the gospel with six people in a day. But in the beginning, it could be clumsy. A message of 30 minutes, you will use three hours. What you're supposed to say in five minutes, you will use 30 minutes. Because you lack, you lack utterance. Because you are not given to practice. Because you have, you have not built your word bank. Such that you can pull out resources from the abundance of your heart. And walk your way through explaining the gospel. So the more you feed on the word. The more you teach the word. The more accurate and precise your ministry becomes. That's why teaching and learning has no alternative 
as you grow in the word of God, the more effective. Look at Peter. Acts 2.37 now. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Next verse, 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Look at Acts chapter 3 verse 18. Pay attention. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. Next verse. Now pay attention to next verse. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. In the two messages, there is one word that has appeared two times. It appeared in the first one and it has appeared in this one. What was it? Repent. Okay, very good. You're taking note. Repent. Okay, look at the next one. Acts chapter 4 verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God had raised from the dead, even by him though this man stand here before you whole. 11. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Acts 5.31. All of these are Peter's sermons. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Acts chapter 10 verse 39. Peter's sermon in the house of Cornelius. And we are witnesses of all this which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they slew and hung on a tree. Him God raised up by the third day and showed him openly. 41. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God. Even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. 42. And he commanded us to preach unto the people. And to testify that it is he which was ordained of God. To be the judge of quick and dead. 43. To him give all the prophets witness. That through his name, whosoever believeth. See the difference? He's no more talking repent. He's talking believe it. In him shall receive remission of sins. So his message begins to be more precise. It begins to be more clearer because the man is maturing. Next verse. While Peter yet spake those words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Acts 15 verse 7. Peter. And when they had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God which knoweth the hearts bore them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Next verse. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Look at 11. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they. Did you see that his message has changed? As he grew, his message became clearer, more precise and more exact. So as you grow in the world, you will be effective in sharing the world. As you grow in the world, you will be effective in sharing the world. So Peter began to share the world to the Gentiles. Asia, Rome, Corinth. As you preach, you hear, you preach, you hear, you preach, you get more better. As you hear, you preach, you get more better. So your scriptural growth will affect how effective you are in sharing Christ. Your growth in the scriptures will affect how effective you are 
in sharing Christ. Look at another guy by the name of Apollos in Acts chapter 18 verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandra, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. Next verse. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. That's a lacuna there for him. Knowing only the baptism of John. Next verse. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. They interpreted, expounded diharmonia. Now as a result of that, something happened to Apollos. Look at verse 28. For he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. His message became more precise. His message became more Christ-centered. He's no more eloquent, mighty in scriptures, knowing only the baptism of John. He has grown now. He is now able to show by the scriptures, both in public and private, that Jesus was the Christ. So by opening himself to hear the truth of the gospel, he became more effective. So the gospel is about God's forgiveness. The gospel is about God's forgiveness of sins. The gospel, because you are going to preach it, the gospel is about God's forgiveness of sins. Look at Luke 24, 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. What are we to preach? Repentance and remission of sins. 1 John chapter 2 verse 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. For the sins of how many people? The sins of the whole world. So Jesus is the propitiation or the payment for the sins of the whole world. So the gospel announces God's forgiveness. The gospel is the announcement of God's forgiveness. God's forgiveness is not what God does. God's forgiveness is what God gives. God's forgiveness is not what God does. God's forgiveness is God's offer to the sinner. God's forgiveness is the grace of God offered to the sinner who cannot qualify. God's forgiveness is God's offer. Is God's offer of grace. The forgiveness of sins. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 19. To wit that God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. Pay attention. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. So, it's so important to know. That God does not hold any sinner accountable. And somebody said, does God overlook sin? No. God does not overlook sin. Does God treat sin casually? No. What does God do to sin? He punishes sin. And he punishes sin se severely. But this is the difference. He punishes it on himself on our behalf. So faith in him frees us from sin and its consequences. Is it clear here? Right. Now, in evangelism, you must emphasize that. The second thing you must emphasize here is there is a term that is often used in evangelism. Give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ. That term is not biblical in salvation. That term is not biblical in salvation. In salvation, you don't give. In salvation, you receive. John 1 12. As many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. John 1 12. As many as receive him, so in salvation you receive God's offer. 
In salvation, you receive God's offer. In salvation, you don't give God anything. You believe and receive. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But have ever So in salvation, you don't give your life to Christ. You have no life to give Christ. A sinner is dead. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. A sinner is dead. He is dead to God and dead to righteousness. So a sinner has no life to give. Rather, a sinner receives God's offer. John 6, 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So salvation is to receive what God offers. When you preach and evangelize, you must always use the right words. You must always use the right words. When Philip went to Samaria, they gave report and said, Samaria had received Acts 8.14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. Samaria had what? Received. So in salvation, you receive. You don't give. We don't give our lives to Christ. You receive life. You don't give life in salvation. You receive life. He is the one that quickened us. We didn't quicken him. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5 and 6. Even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. Look at the next verse. And had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly in Christ. So in salvation, you don't give your life. He is the one that gave his life. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. But God commended his love toward us. In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God gave his son, you receive his son. He that spared not his son, but gave him up. Romans chapter 8 verse 32. He that spared not his son, but delivered him up. So it is God that gave his life for us. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? When you know that, you tell people to believe and receive God's life. Believe and receive God's life. Don't give your life. You don't have life. When you give people an impression that at salvation they are giving God something. You make them come to God with a performance mentality. You make them come to God as if they are doing God a favor. You are not doing God a favor. So you are not giving him something. Rather, he is doing you a favor. He is giving you himself. I am come that you may have. I am come that you may have life. So in salvation... We don't give God. In salvation, we receive from God. Colossians 3, 4. When Christ who is our life shall appear. When Christ who is our life shall appear. Then shall you also appear with him in glory. So in salvation, we receive God's life. We receive God's offer. Christ comes in to give us life. The second thing you must take note of in preaching... Is that the gospel is not asking people to obey God. The gospel is not asking people to obey God. The gospel is not asking people to follow God. I have decided. My, my singing ministry is on vacation today. To follow Jesus. So in salvation, it's not I have decided to follow Jesus. Mm-mm. In salvation, it's not the wall behind me, the cross before me. Eh, that's not salvation. The problem with the church today is, 
We teach discipleship as salvation. And we teach salvation as discipleship. We teach discipleship as salvation. Then we teach salvation as discipleship. In salvation, you are not deciding to follow Jesus. It's not your decision. It's his decision that you respond to. In salvation, it is Jesus' decision that you respond to. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and gave himself for us. So that is why in salvation, you are just a recipient of what God offers. So it is not a following of Jesus. It is not an obeying of Jesus. God surrendered all. God gave you. You are the recipient. So what is wrong with I surrender all in salvation? You don't surrender anything. You are dead. You are dead. You don't surrender anything. He surrendered himself for you to have. We don't surrender in salvation. You know, all talk of, they do all talk of people gather on the pulpit. I surrender. I... <laughs> Leave all that, my friend. You don't surrender anything. Salvation is a place of celebration. That a man came from death to life. Salvation is a place of jubilation. That what I didn't qualify for has been given to me free of charge. It's not a place of crying and if there is crying, it should be tears of joy. <laughs> we are not mourning. It has been done. We are not crying for God to die again. He has died. We are only celebrating the gift of his grace. Oh, hallelujah. So salvation is not surrender all. It is after you are saved. You are now in Christ. Discipleship is surrender all for ministry. It is for ministry you surrender all. I give God my time. I give God my moments. I give God my hand. I give God my voice to use in preaching the gospel. That is where you surrender. It is called consecration. You don't do it for salvation. You do it after salvation in consecration. I surrender all. Use me. I'm available. Use my hands. Use my voice to preach your word. Use my hands to heal the sick. Use my voice to comfort those that are lost. That is after you are saved. It's not before you are saved. Before you are saved, you have nothing that God can use. Before you are saved, you are a total liability. You are a collateral irresponsibility. God has no nothing in you that he can use. It is after you are saved, you are now a part of his family. You now become his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. You now become a co-laborer with God. That is when he can use you. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. So in salvation, you don't surrender. But after you are saved, you surrender. There is no reward for salvation. It's not your work. It's his work. But there is reward after salvation in service. These are concepts you must understand. So you can be a workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You must preach Christ's obedience for us. Not we obeying. His obedience was on our behalf. So his obedience is our obedience. What we call obedience is what we call believe. When you believe the gospel, what you've done is you have received Christ's obedience. He obeyed. Not as I will. Your will be done. He obeyed for our salvation. When you believe what he has done, his obedience becomes your obedience. That's what the Bible says. You have believed from the heart. That form of doctrine that was given to you. You have believed from the heart. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. So we preach Christ's obedience for us. 
When you read obedience in the epistles, it means to believe. When you read obedience in the epistles, it means to believe. So how do you obey good news? You don't obey good news. You only give good news. Any good news that you have to obey is no more good news. It means it's a demand. It is good news because there is nothing for you to do than to take. Is it true? That's why it's good news. So you don't obey good news. You receive good news. Once obedience enters, it is no more a finished work. So the obedience is Christ's obedience on our behalf. Romans chapter 1 verse 5. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith which is faith in Christ. See the way he uses obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Look at Romans chapter 5 verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Christ's obedience made us righteous. In sharing the gospel, ensure you are not extracting commitment from anybody. Ensure you are not extracting commitment from anybody. In sharing the gospel, ensure you are not extracting commitment from anybody. Don't say, are you ready to follow Jesus for the rest of your life? Are you ready to follow Jesus for the rest of your life? You are extracting a commitment. And he doesn't have the ability to say yes to that request. If he did, he wouldn't need Christ. Don't extract a commitment. In the preaching of the gospel, you preach faith. People believe they are saved. You don't extract commitment. Don't ask them, are you ready to surrender all? Are you ready to surrender all? If you are ready to surrender all, say with me. The things I used to do, I do them no more. You have left Christ. You have met Moses and two of you have partnered. Salvation is not the things I used to do, I do no more. Salvation is a resurrection from the dead. Salvation is new life. It's not develop improvement. It's not becoming a better person. Salvation is a brand new life. We are his workmanship created. When you create something, it doesn't have a history. A creation is a new start. The people said, what must I do to be saved? Look at the answer. Acts 16.30 And brought them out and said, Sars, what must I do to be saved? Four keys to salvation. Number one, be circumcised. Number two, pay tight. Number three, confess all your sins. Number four, fall down on the ground and cry with sackcloth and ashes. No, that's not salvation. What must I do to be saved? Look at it. And they said, believe. Salvation is faith in what Christ has done. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved and thy house. Period. We preach Jesus' crucifixion. His death. His burial. His resurrection for salvation. So Jesus said to the disciples. Tarry in Jerusalem. Until you be endued with power from on high. Acts 1 8. You shall receive power, then you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 1, verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. The Spirit of God is given to us to the intent that we're able to share the gospel of Christ. The Spirit of God is given to us. To the intent that we are able to share the gospel of Christ. No man can call Jesus Lord. But by the Holy Ghost. No man can call Jesus Lord. But by the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 12.3 Wherefore I give you to understand. That no man speaking by the spirit of God called Jesus accursed. 
and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. It's two ways. Number one, that is the recipient of the gospel will call Jesus Lord because he has had the right gospel. The recipient of the gospel will call Jesus Lord because he has had the right gospel. So this is, this is it. It takes the spirit of God which we have to share the gospel. It takes the spirit of God which we have to share the gospel. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Do you have the Holy Spirit? If you have the Holy Spirit, shout Holy Spirit. It takes the Holy Spirit which we have to share the gospel. Number two. It takes the spirit of God which you have for your recipient to believe the gospel. It takes the spirit of God which you have for your recipient to receive the gospel. First of all, it takes the spirit of God which you have for you to share the gospel. Number two, it takes the spirit of God which you have for your recipient to believe the gospel. So both you and the recipient, you are all works of the Holy Ghost. Is the work of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit equips us to share the gospel. And the Spirit will have men to accept the gospel. Sharing the gospel and having men believe the gospel. is not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit. I'm saying, as you go out to share the gospel, trust the Holy Spirit in you. To communicate the word. As you go out to share the gospel. Trust the Holy Spirit in you. To communicate the word. Trust the Holy Spirit in you. To witness to the people. To witness to them. Don't trust your prowess. Don't trust your grammar. Don't trust your constructions. Don't trust your eloquence. All those is useless. Trust the Holy Ghost to be a witness to the word. And trust the Holy Ghost to help the hearer to receive the gospel. That's what brother, brother Peter who said in Acts chapter 2 verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Give me verse 18. And on my servants and my handmaidens I will pour in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. Next verse. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Mark 16, 15 to 20. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Next verse. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Next verse. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Next verse. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Next verse. So then, after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Next verse. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Did you observe that it's all go ye, go ye therefore. They went forth. In evangelism, we don't ask people to come. No. Don't ask people to come. Don't give them a hand beam. Come to our church. Come to our program. Eh, eh, that's not evangelism. Mm -mm. In evangelism, you go. Go ye. Go ye therefore. They went forth. They went forth. There is no evangelism of calling people to your house. Mm -mm. In evangelism, you go to them. Because evangelism takes with it the character of God. God came to us. So the evangelist must go to the people. We go to where the sinners are. Dr. T.L. Osborne wrote a book many years ago. Out where the sinners are. You go to where they are. You go to them. You go to their homes. You meet them on the streets. You go to their offices. You meet them, you know, wherever they are. In their, in their homes. You go to wherever they are out where the sinners are. 
Sinners are waiting for you. A sinner is not identified by his deeds. A sinner is identified by what he believes. A sinner is not identified by his deeds. A sinner is identified by what he believes. A sinner is not identified by his deeds. A sinner is identified by what he believes. So there will be signs with the gospel we preach. Look at Mark 16, 20 carefully. And they went forth and preached everywhere. Where did they preach? Everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word, not their tears. He was confirming the word with signs following amen. Question, what does God confirm? And what does God use in confirming the word? Huh? Oh, talk to me, church. So if you want to see signs, what do you do? Preach the word. When you preach the word, who will confirm the word? Not you. So you don't go and be arranging miracles. God confirms his word. When the word is preached, and sometimes you may not even know that miracles have happened because it's not showmanship. You may not know. Only the person who you are preaching to knows something has happened. When you preach the word, you must trust the word because it's not your word. The person that gave you the word is inside his word. Jesus is called the word of God. So if you preach the word, the word is in the word, working with the word. The word is in the word. So trust the word of God and preach it. Don't make it nice. Don't decorate it. Preach it the way it is. You are not smarter than God. Preach it the way it is. Let him that owns the word confirm his word. What does he confirm his word with? Signs. Preach the word. Preach it with confidence. Preach it by faith. Preach it by the power of the spirit and trust the spirit. So listen, there will be signs with the gospel we preach. There will be signs with the gospel we preach. Signs include demonstration of miracles. Demonstration of miracles. I believe in miracles absolutely because the message I preach carries with it miracle power. When we preach the word, signs follow the word. But these signs include demonstration of miracles as we go to preach. So as you are going to preach, know that you are carrying the word with miracle power. You are not carrying miracle power. I didn't say you are carrying miracle power. What did I say? You are carrying the word with miracle power. Exactly. That's very important. There's a difference between carrying miracle power and carrying the word with miracle power. They are not the same. Now, utterance, write down, revelation will be available as you speak by revelation. Utterance. Revelation, they will be available as you speak. Gifts of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to 10. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, word of knowledge by the same Spirit, next verse. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, next verse. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another diverse kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. These gifts accompany you as you preach. These are the things you will experience as you give yourself to evangelism. These gifts are not for fun fair. They are tools for work. They are tools for soul winning. If you will take the gospel to a place. Where people have not heard the gospel. And preach it simply. The kind of miracles you will see. You will think you are in Hadbonke. I'm not joking. 
The reason why you're not seeing miracles is because first of all, you're not giving to evangelism. And then number two, the reason why you want to see miracles is because you want to see miracles, which is showmanship. That's the only reason. If you go to where people are in darkness, they have not seen Christ. And you preach the simple message of the gospel. And you pray a miracle prayer. You will see miracles that will shock you yourself. I'm not joking. I'm very serious. It doesn't matter how long you got born again. Even if you just got born again today. If you take the gospel to a place where the gospel is needed, you will see the demonstration of gospel. Because the message is not your message, it's his message. That's why one of the ways to train people to win souls is to take them to the field. Take them to the field, let them preach the message. And along with preaching, let them pray for the sick. Praying for the sick is a demonstration of the goodness of God. He went about doing and healing so healing is a demonstration of God's goodness. And the message is good news. And in the good news of the gospel is the goodness of God. In the good news of the gospel is the goodness of God. So when he said the Lord was working with them, what he means is that the gifts of the spirit were in operation. When he said the Lord was working with them, what he means is that the gift of the spirit was in operation. So the gifts of the spirit are present anywhere the gospel is preached. Listen to me. You can write this down. You have never lacked ability to communicate the gospel. You have never lacked ability to communicate the gospel. You can write it like, I have never lacked ability to communicate the gospel. You just didn't notice that you had that ability. You just didn't acknowledge that ability. You just didn't notice or you didn't know that you had that ability. Everybody say with me very loud, I flow with the spirit as I share the gospel of Christ. Say it again, I flow with the spirit as I share the gospel of Christ. One more time, I flow with the spirit as I share the gospel of Christ. Let's see a classical example here. Let me give you an introduction. You know, in the book of Acts, when you read the book of Acts, you will find something like Acts 4.33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. You will see in Acts chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. Chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. The apostles were the ones who had miracle signs and wonders. The apostles. The apostles in chapter 2, 3, 4, and 5. It was only the apostles that had signs, miracles, and wonders. And there were many reasons for this. Number one, the church was in an ignorant state. The church was at a state of ignorance. Number two, everybody was just growing. They were waking up to the resurrection. They were waking up. The church in Acts was a church of baby Christians growing. It was not a church of giants. They were all babies. Spiritually learning how to walk. In the book of Acts. You will see a progression of the growth of the church. As you study through the book. So they were babies. Okay. And the only people that had some level of maturity were the apostles. So that's why it was only the apostles in the first five chapters. That were doing miracles. Now but follow this. It was a new convert. That brought the full gospel to the early church. A new convert. His name was Paul. Apostle Paul was the person that brought the full gospel. To the church in the book of Acts. By Acts 6. You will find that miracles. Were no more only done by the apostles. From chapter 6. Something shifted. Because now people were involved in preaching. So the miracles became more. People, the congregation started getting involved in preaching. It had nothing to do with the, with the apostles. It had everything to do with the message. It's not about how great a man of God is that makes miracles happen. It is the message that brings the miracles. It is not the title of the preacher that makes miracles. It is the message. The Lord was working with them. Confirming what? His word. 
So anybody that will preach the word and preach it right, miracles will follow. So it is not the people, it's not the personalities, it is the message that miracles follow to accomplish. Alright, so the message of Jesus Christ is anointed with the Holy Spirit. So in Acts chapter 6, there was an issue that started with the women. And then they had to appoint deacons. They had to appoint deacons. And one of the deacons was Philip. But before Philip, there was another deacon by the name of Stephen. Stephen was also a deacon. That Stephen that was stoned, that was killed. He was a deacon. Deacon means protocol, ushers, technical department, sound, cameraman. Okay? All those are deacons. Deacons have to do with physical responsibilities. And you will not believe that it is such people that were called Stephen. Stephen was one of the deacons. But look at what followed Stephen. So that you know it's not about title and position. Okay? These are deacons. So that you see how God operates. These are deacons. And Stephen was with miracles, signs, and wonders. Romans 15, 18. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ had not wrought by me. To make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Next verse. Through mighty signs and wonders. By the power of the spirit of God. So that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Now what brother Paul was saying is that. The full gospel of Christ is preaching with miracles. The full by word and deed. Preaching with miracles. You preach, you heal the sick. You preach, you, you believe God for miracles for the people. Preaching and miracles. A combination of the two is called the full gospel. It's called the full gospel. When the gospel has signs and wonders. First Corinthians 4.20 For the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. We preach the word with power. We preach the word with power. Right? Why is it with power? Look at 1 Corinthians 4.19 But I will come to you shortly if the Lord will and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up but the power. I'm not coming to make noise. I will preach the word and power will follow it. I will preach the word and miracles will follow it. I will preach the word, signs and wonders will follow it. Say with me, I preach the word with power. Say it very loud, I preach the word with power. Say it like you know what you're talking about. I preach the word with signs and wonders. I didn't hear powerful, amen. In Acts chapter 8 verse 5, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. What did Philip do in Samaria? He preached what? Christ, look at verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere doing what? Is it only the apostles that are preaching? So Philip's example is one of them who went everywhere to preach the word. So Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ. So preaching the word is preaching Christ. If you are not preaching Christ, you are not preaching the word. Preaching the word is preaching Christ. If you are not preaching Christ, you are not preaching the word. In Acts chapter 8 verse 6, look at the outcome. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. He preached and accompanying his preaching, miracles. Accom the first thing is preaching. Then what follows preaching is miracles. Give me the next verse. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed. Verse 8. For there was great joy in that city. 
The gospel brings joy. The good news brings joy. He shares the gospel. Then there's miracles. Follow me. Follow the sequence. He shares the gospel. Then there's miracles, signs, and wonders. Before miracles, we find utterance. He preached. Before miracles, we find utterance. He preached. Then after utterance, signs and wonders. After utterance, signs and wonders. And this is Deacon Philip. There was someone else called Stephen. Another Deacon. Acts chapter 6 verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. These are Deacons. These are Deacons. These are not apostles. These are brothers in the church. These are brothers that are passionate. Brothers are on fire. Serving the Lord did great wonders and signs. And these two guys were not apostles. They were deacons, diaconos. D these are people did natural things in the church. Acts chapter 8. They saw miracles. There was another guy called Ananias. A certain disciple who met Saul of Tarsus. You remember him? He was a disciple. Who is a disciple? Somebody who is learning. Paul, Paul is an apostle. But the apostle was discipled by a disciple. He's not an apostle that God Paul is a brother. Brother Ananias. And when he saw Paul, he said, Brother Paul. These are brothers. No title, no act bishop, act pope, act deacon, deacon diaconos act. <laughs> Brother Paul, glory to God. Acts chapter 8, verse 25. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. In where? Many villages. Look at 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza which is desert. Please pay attention here. So we find direction in his evangelism. He first of all by choice goes to evangelize. But as he begins to evangelize he begins to receive supernatural direction on where to go. It is not supernatural direction first. It is go and preach. But as he begins to be involved with evangelism, the spirit now begins to tell him, go to that person. Go to that person. Now he is doing evangelism by direction. But it begins by simple obedience. Don't wait to be told, go. Go. It's already written, go ye therefore. You don't have to wait. For God to shout, go my son. God is speaking now. Go my son. And somebody said, no, he didn't say go my daughter. He only said go my son. Go my daughter. <laughs> glory to God. Oh, glory to God. So, you can be going and the spirit of God will lead you to somebody. Sometimes when you are going for evangelism, you are heading to a place. You will just see somebody and the spirit of God will say, that one. And then you come there. That, that is the leading. That's, that's when you begin to have leadings in evangelism. Expect them as you begin to evangelize. Expect leadings. And when you are led like that, you will find yourself saying the right things. Because that leading is supernatural. So you will find gifts of the spirit. Revelation gifts. Or trance. All that will be flowing because it is supernatural evangelism. That's what happened to this guy. He was led. He's preaching a crusade. The spirit told him, go, 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 go. And he left. Now, remember, he didn't start out with leading. He went out first. So there will be such peculiar instances where you will be led to certain individuals to share. You start by obeying general instructions. Then in the midst of obeying general instructions, you start getting revelation by the Holy Spirit. Go to that fellow. 
go to the order. Look at Acts chapter 8 verse 30. Then Philip ran thither to him and had him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? He's preaching. God said, go, 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 go. And as he goes, he meets the man on the chariot. Lead him by the spirit. And he preached unto him Jesus. He didn't preach favor for global wealth transfer. He preached unto him Jesus. He preached unto him Jesus. Look at verse 39 of Acts chapter 8. And when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. That the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. Next verse. But Philip was found. He was caught. The next thing was he was found. He was found at Azotus. And passing through, he preached in all the cities. Till he came to Caesarea. So it's in the interruption of the spirit. You will find a revelation. He is led by the spirit. He is caught by the spirit. Then he preaches the gospel with signs and wonders. I repeat. He is led by the spirit. He is caught by the spirit. Then he preaches the gospel with signs and wonders. Listen carefully. When we preach the gospel of Christ, by the Old Testament understanding, preaching is prophesying. By the Old Testament understanding, when you preach, you are prophesying. When you speak by the spirit, it is actually prophecy. When you speak the word of God by the spirit, which is what you do, you are actually prophesying. The gospel is not miracles. The gospel is not miracles. The gospel is a message. Within that message, there are miracles. The gospel is not miracles. The gospel is a message. Where a man believes that Jesus died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. Let's not get carried away by signs and wonders. Signs and wonders do not equate salvation. The miracles and signs are to confirm the message. The message still has to be preached. The message still has to be preached. And every one of us is equipped the same way with signs and wonders as we preach the message. Every one of us is equipped the same way with signs and wonders as he preaches the message. You preach the message of Christ. You will see power and glory. Blind eyes will open. I thought I would hear a good amen. amen. Cripples will walk. Amen. Deaf ears will be opened. Amen. Dead situations will come alive. You just preach the word. The word is power. And there are instances also where you will minister to people and they'll be filled with the spirit. You get them to speak in tongues. You teach them. You minister the word of God to them. And they'll be filled with the spirit. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. God calls Ananias, who is just an ordinary brother, to pray for Paul and give Paul foundation class. And Paul became the chief of all apostles. So every one of us can lay hands on the sick. Every one of us. We all are believers. We lay hands in this, on the sick as we go on the mission of the gospel. Say with me, I heal the sick by the Holy Ghost. Say with me, I heal the sick by the Holy Ghost. Say with me, I preach the word by the Holy Ghost. Say it again, I preach the word by the Holy Ghost. Say with me, I receive boldness to preach the word by the Holy Ghost. Say, I receive power to preach the word by the Holy Ghost. Say, these signs follow me as I preach the word. I heal the sick. I cast out demons. I raise the dead. I cleanse the lepers. These signs follow me as I preach the word. Rise on your feet and say with me very loud, I am a proof producer. I produce proof as I preach the word. I preach the word. I have utterance. Shout it very loud. I have utterance. I have boldness. Signs and wonders. Follow me. Signs and wonders. Follow me. As I preach the word. I preach the word. With boldness. Say I receive boldness. Say it again. I receive boldness to preach the word in Jesus name. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Father, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice in this building. I steer everyone up here to, to evangelism, discipleship. I steer up everyone here to obedience to the call of the great commission. 
and I decree that every excuse is terminated. Your people are stirred up, your people are equipped, your people are built up, and as your people go forth to preach the word, these signs follow the word in the name of Jesus. Wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, as your amen is coming like thunder, receive boldness. Receive boldness. Receive boldness. Receive boldness. Receive boldness. And with great grace, you will make manifest the resurrection. These signs follow you. Receive utterance. Receive utterance. Receive utterance. In the name of Jesus. Father, we rejoice. We rejoice that you have given to us and entrusted to us the ministry of reconciliation. And we thank you for the privilege and the honor. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a service. I know you've been blessed by the word of his grace. Please don't go away. Don't go away. The essence of the teaching of God's word is to build you up, equip you, so you can do the work of ministry. That's the whole essence. Not just to acquire knowledge and see that, but to teach you so you can teach others. Brother Paul says, the things that you have learned of me among many witnesses, the same you commit to others who shall also commit to others. Two things. Number one, if you don't belong to a Bible teaching church where the message of Christ is taught, where the revelation of Jesus is brought to you, then you either join one of our campuses or you can begin one in your community and become the lighthouse for other believers to assemble around and be fed and be taught the word. And today you want to join either a campus of ours or you want to start a campus. All you need to do is shoot me a mail, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com with your details. We shall get in touch with you and we shall work with you, equip you, and train you. And we shall walk you through establishing a campus or being a part of one of our already existing campuses in your locality. Lastly, I've written a number of books to address doctrinal issues and to answer questions that you might have. They're on the screen right now. Today, if you require any of those books, you want to order for them, or all of them, or you want to order for our CDs or DVDs, shoot a mail also to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com requesting for the materials and our office will get in touch with you and see how they can work out getting the books to wherever you are around the world. I'm excited that I'm able to be a blessing to you today. Remember, I'm live here on Facebook every morning at 10 a.m. GMT plus one, 12 noon GMT plus one, 6 p.m. GMT plus one, and 10 p.m. GMT plus one. Many times a day, feeding you, feeding you, feeding you, equipping you because we want you to come to a place of robust understanding of an effective relationship between you and God. Share with other people as you look forward to continuing to be a blessing in your life. And until I see you in the next broadcast, enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Amen. Amen to your victory station.